and Minnesota Wild. So Minnesota is one of those teams that, like Columbus, kind of a lot to go on. It's not a huge history there. You have a team that has a little under 20 years in the NHL, and what they have isn't overly successful. So you're not looking at a team that's won 50 games. In a, I don't think they've won 50 games in a season. Um, just as an example, just to, as one thing you can look at as a, a measure of success and say, no, they, have, they don't have that. And it's not an insult to Minnesota, but it, it does mean that when you're looking at the history of the team, um, of course, the Minnesota Wild were brought in in 2000, and it was brought in to correct a large mistake. The Minnesota North Stars moving, well, I understood it at the time, and I was perfectly fine with the North Stars moving to Dallas because there seemed to be more interest in Dallas at that time than there was in Minnesota. Minnesota is hockey territory in the U.S. Um, as they'd proven with the North Stars initially, and as they've proven with the Minnesota Wild, Minnesota will support hockey. Um, now let's see. Yeah, the, num the, the highest number of wins they've ever had is 46. That was in 1415. And the amount of success they've had has been muddled. Um, they came in the same year as Columbus. They posted less points than Columbus, not by much, the first year. They went with a more youthful draft than Columbus did. Um, I've got the initial year of the Minnesota Wild in here. Um, the NHL returns to Hockey Mad Minnesota for the first time since uh, Norm Green and the North Stars bailed for the heart of Texas after the 92-93 season. This time, the Twin Cities believe the NHL is here for good. The Wild have already sold more than 15,000 season tickets and all corporate suites and the brand new arena in St. Paul were sold out months ago. And even the slightest transaction is a major story. Unfortunately, it won't be good hockey at least for a few years. And it was at year three that they made the playoffs and they qualified for the conference finals. In part by knocking out the Vancouver Canucks, which made me very angry. Um, unlike expansion cousin Columbus, the Wild is building for the, short, for the long term at the expense of the short term. Minnesota will have few proven veterans in opening night and instead is throwing kids to the dogs, similar to how Ottawa approached its entrance to the NHL. GM Doug Risebrow wants to win, but he admits he's looking well beyond the first few seasons. We want to build a foundation for a team uh, that wants to become successful and stays successful, Risebrow said. In the expansion draft, the Wild went after players with solid reputations of working hard every shift every night. Leading that team will be a no-nonsense coach, Jacques Lemaire, who likely will get more out of the team, such as such more out of a team such as this than any coach in the league, and that's true. Uh, Jacques Lemaire um, is one of the best coaches I've ever seen, but he's also one of the most maddening. And that with New Jersey and then with Minnesota, um, he showed that he can pull the life out of a game and take a team that doesn't really have the talent and get them to win. Expectations. Face it, expansion teams usually stink. In the latest wave of expansion, starting with the 91-92 Sharks, the best expansion team is the Florida Panthers, and even they didn't crack 500. Risebrow says making the playoffs is a foolish thought, but that doesn't mean he and Lemaire will settle for anything less than 100% each night. Uh, keep an eye on Stacy Roost. Detroit captain Steve Eisenman asked Red Wings management to find a way to protect Roost from the expansion draft. He's a perfect third-line center, but he'll likely get bumped up to second line or first line. And he did have 300-point seasons in junior. And Stacy Roost was considered at the time uh, to be like the, the, the crown jewel for Minnesota, and it never really worked out for him. Um, Jeff Nielsen, the former University of Minnesota forward, is coming home in the wild, is hoping for a breakout homecoming. Risebrow thinks Nielsen is a potential 20-goal scorer, and Nielsen will get more ice time than he ever would have uh, has ever seen before. It didn't happen. Aaron Gavey, once a big time scorer in junior, Gavey has to has had to adjust to life in the NHL by becoming a checker. Still, he had seven goals in 41 games last season, and he should be given more of an offensive role with the Wild. He was given more of an offensive role with the Wild, and it didn't quite work out for him. Uh, goaltending, the Wild has decided to go with two young backups who haven't pr who have proven upsides, but haven't 
proven they can be number one goalies. Uh, former St. Louis Blues backup Jamie McLennan and for, former Dallas star Manny Fernandez will get their tests this year. And it should be baptism by fire playing uh, backstop with an expansion team. And this was interesting too. Um, Fernandez, Lemaire's nephew, went 11-8-3 with a 2.13 goals against average. It was for Dallas. Don't expect him to have the same type of immediate success Roman Turek had with St. Louis after leaving his Ed Bell for his backup. Uh, McLennan, 9-5-2 uh, with a 1.96 goals against average. Could be short-term number one, but hope is Fernandez eventually will be a star. De Minnesota has had a tradition of getting goaltenders who overachieve. And Manny Fernandez did, McLennan somewhat did, Rolison definitely did. A lot of, it's and it's two things. It is the fact that the goaltenders overachieve, as well as they're able to recognize the diamonds in the rough. Uh, Devin Dubnik is the latest example of that. Minnesota has always been able to recognize guys who have a lot of talent that maybe the team that they're on doesn't give them credit for. Uh, defense. The top two defensemen, Curtis LeCision and Sean O'Donnell, are solid and dependable veterans. After that, defense is patchwork. Brad Bombardier and Andy Sutton are hoping increased ice time will elevate their games, and the Wild is hoping former cap prospect Oleg Orakovsky is ready to step into the NHL. Another, and he wasn't. Another element the Wild's blue line lacks is an offensive leader. One long shot is for that role is Lubomir Sakaris, a 31-year-old who had 31 points in 52 games in the Czech Republic last season. And he, he had a good NHL career. Um, Eric Reitz, a second-round draft pick in the draft, could be a future star, but the Wild won't rush him, and he's not a future star. Um, offense. What offense? Like any expansion team, the Wild will certainly struggle for goals. Sergei Krivokrasov scored 25 goals two seasons ago for expansion Nashville, but that was by far the highest output of his career, and he, he didn't do that again. I understood Minnesota picking him up, but Krivokrasov wasn't able to do it again. Scott Pellerin scored 20 goals two years ago for St. Louis, but has had eight goal seasons in three of the past four years. The Wild is banking on stars Roost, Gaby, and Cam Stewart to develop a consistent scoring touch uh, that they have yet to show in the NHL, and they didn't. Uh, Minnesota was not a very good scoring team. Uh, their first year, they only had 168 goals. So that is roughly two goals per game. Um, yeah, and then they picked up Pavel Patera, who I, I, I don't remember if he played for them or what, but he, yeah, he wasn't very good. Uh, unsung hero, Darby Hendrickson. He won't score 20 goals. He won't have 30 assists. He won't crack up, rack up 200 penalty minutes. He will, though, work hard every night, and that's what every expansion team needs. He should be a fan favorite considering he grew up in Richfield, Minnesota, and makes his summer home in Duluth. And Darby Hendrickson was very good for them that, that first season. Uh, budget expectations, the wild owners have deep pockets, but Risebrow will be kept in budget. Uh, kit will keep the budget in line with most expansion teams. Money will be spent when the wild field is closer to becoming competitive. So, uh, let's see. The number one draft pick that first year. I don't remember if that was Gabrick right off the bat or not. Yeah, Gabrick was their first draft pick, 2003rd overall. Excellent skater with nice puck handling skills and effective in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's a natural goal scorer, but needs to improve his defensive game. He still needs to improve his defensive game, but he's had a good long NHL career. So that means something. Um, and then in terms of their top 10 prospects, uh, Philip Cuba ended up being decent for them, and... Uh, Lubomir Sekarash, as I said earlier, ended up being decent for them. The other eight, not so much. Um, and it was it was really a team of of mishmashed, mixed up kind of guys. Um, but Minnesota did well for an expansion team. So that first year, they ended up with uh, twenty five wins. 
which is insane considering only had 168 goals. Um, they had 210 goals against, which is crazy considering they were an expansion team. So less than three goals against per game. Oh, excuse me. Um, it was 0203 when they got better. They only had 198 goals for, but they only had 178 goals against. So they went from a 68-point team to a 95-point team by their third year. Then they missed the playoffs for the next two seasons. Three years if you include the fact there was no season in 04-05. Um, and then from there they've made the playoffs. Like, they made the playoffs twice, then they missed the playoffs four times. Now they've made the playoffs four years in a row. Uh, if you look at their early returns this year, they look like... They look like a... a a team that probably makes the playoffs again this year. Probably. Somehow, some way. But I, I really don't know that I look at the Wild and say, okay, this is a team that's going in the right direction. Bruce Boudreaux is a good coach. I like Bruce Boudreaux a lot. I like him a lot considering the teams he's coached haven't been teams that I've liked very much. But that playoff thing, that whole Game 7 thing, that mystique around them, it's there for a reason. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see... It's going to be interesting to see if uh, if he can break that now that he's in Minnesota. Um, in terms of their records, uh, there's not a lot of guys here who have put up tremendous totals for them. Uh, they're most points, most goals in the season still Gabrick with 42, and that was in 07 08. Most points in the season was 83, and that was Gabrick in 07 08. So that's barely a point a game, and that's the best that, that they've had. All right, so we get past the Wilds season stats. Um, longest consecutive game streak, Anti Laxanen with uh, 288 from. October 6th of 2000 till December 29th of 2003. Most penalty minutes in a career, Matt Johnson had 698. As a team, the most penalty minutes they had in a season, 1,209. And what's weird with this is they happened twice in 2001, 2002, 2005, 2006. So they had the exact same number of penalty minutes twice. Um, most shutouts in a season as a team, they've had eight, three times. Um, their longest losing streak, they've had an 11 game losing streak twice. Most points in the game, um, Marion Gabrick had six and he did it twice. October 26, 2002 and December 20th, 2007. So there's a lot of duplicate stuff here. Uh, most points in a, in a rookie uh, season, Marion Gabrick with 36. You would think that after almost 20 years in the league that a rookie would have more than 36 points in a season for uh, Minnesota. And that's crazy. Kind of crazy. So let's take a look at uh, career stats in Minnesota and get an idea for who the, the, the leaders are. Uh, for games played, Miko Koivu is number one with 774. Nick Schultz is second with 743. Pierre Marc Bouchard is 565. Marion Gabrick, 502. Andrew Burnett, 489. Brent Burns, 453. Kyle Brodziak, 446. Wes Walls, 438. Stefan Velia, 428. Uh, Nicholas Backstrom, 409. So that's the goaltender with 409. Uh, goals, Marion Gabrick, 219. Nico Koivu, 163. Andrew Burnett, 119. Zach Parise, 107. Mark Pierre Marc Bouchard, 106. Brian Ralston, 96. Wes Walls, 82. Kyle Brodziak, 72. Pascal Dupuis, 67. Jason Pominville, 65. If you look at the assist list, it's pretty much the same suspects. Uh, Nick Schultz is there with 102 in 10th place. Michael Granlin's ninth with 105. Uh, points totals, uh, Miku Koivu dominates all the way across. He's got 561. Followed by Gabrick with 437, Pierre Marc Bouchard 347, uh, Andrew Burnett 321, Zach Prise 215, Brian Rolston 
202, Brent Burns 183, Wes Walls 182, Ryan Suter with 174, so he's cruising up that chart. And Kyle Brodziak with 169. It is kind of surprising that it takes 169 points to break the top 10 list for Minnesota after 10 years in the league. But they have had pretty much a revolving door of players, and they haven't really been a high-scoring team. I know they're trying to be. I know they have dreams of being that. But they're still a very defensive-minded team. And it's just that's their reputation. And there's a reason for it because it's accurate. Um, but Minnesota, again, as I said, it's it's one of those teams that I, I don't look at and say that I have great feelings about them. I've always kind of been angry with the fact they have, they have a very good record against Vancouver. And uh, they did, in their one run to the conference finals, um, that was in 93, or 2003, and that was the Canucks' big season, or it should have been. And the Canucks were up 3-1 to one against the Wild, and I remember Minnesota whooped them in Game 5. And I said at the time, this series is over, Minnesota's going to win it. And I, again, this is one of those things where people... You know, started saying you're not really a Canucks fan. The Canucks aren't going to lose three in a row. You're crazy, and it's just when that momentum shifts in a series, it can be almost impossible to shift it back. So, you know, from that series until now, Minnesota's kind of been a, a team that I I don't usually cheer for. But again, you know, I said in in the Edmonton video, I didn't know if I'd ever cheered. I didn't believe I'd ever cheer for Edmonton in a series. I have cheered for Minnesota in series uh, recent years as underdogs um, against the Hawks a couple years back. I, I cheered for them as underdogs, and you know that that potential is there for me to cheer for them again. But it would require a lot of Devin Dubik. I really like Jason Pominville. Uh I like Ryan Suter. There are players I like in Minnesota. But the hockey they play has, has been so stifling for so long that it makes it really hard for me to pull for the team. And that may seem like a silly reason not to pull for a team, but that just means I have silly reasons for who I cheer for and don't, which makes sense since I cheer for Boston and Dallas as well as Vancouver, three cities that couldn't be further apart uh, in the NHL uh, circle of things. So, yeah. Um, where this leaves me now is, you know, Minnesota, not a, a tremendous history. I do hope it gets better. And it's odd because that means tomorrow I'm doing Montreal. The Montreal Canadians who won a lot of Stanley Cups until after 93 and they haven't won squats since then. But we'll get into that tomorrow. Uh, I don't have a Minnesota jersey. I don't have a Minnesota t-shirt. I have a Minnesota hat. I also have a second Minnesota hat. So I have two hats, which don't equal a jersey or a t-shirt. But I have two hats. Because the one thing I've liked about Minnesota the whole time, whole time is their logo. I am a big fan of the Minnesota Wild logo. Um, not a huge fan of the jerseys they've worn. I liked last year's Winter Classic. And that's about it. Well, stadium series, but it's the same thing. Um, in general, their jerseys, the Christmas tree jerseys they have, haven't been very good. And who knows? Maybe things will will change in terms of their their branding with the new uh, the new jersey deal. But we'll see. Um, and I mean, new kinds of jerseys, not a deal with New Jersey. Anyways, uh, I thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're just browsing your way through. Um, she's finishing up on Hockey Pool stuff, because she's awesome. And, uh, that's true. And, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, yeah, so we'll have the Hockey Pool. I'll have that up tomorrow morning. We'll have the Hockey Pool thing all figured out. What was that look for? I saw that. That was the, yeah, we'll see. Um, no, it's almost a night of amusement. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you all again in the morning.